Janet Boudreau. Oh. Yes, I saw. Yes, I'm Boudreau's. Kind of, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, when I was a teenager, my dad liked to get me jobs. <laughs> So when I was 14, he got me this babysitting job for these two kids who really had negative attitudes. And I really didn't like the job. <laughs> and I mean, I grew up on an island and my mom and my brothers would go to the beach every morning in the summer. And here I was with these two kids who had bad attitudes. So, you know, I did the best I could. So a couple years later, I decided, okay, I'm going to get myself a real job now because I don't want to do this another summer. So I got my first real job selling chocolate in a chocolate store. Well, my dad comes around and says, he has another job for me. Okay. He wants me to, um, to help an elderly woman uh, with cleaning. Okay. And this is all I knew. A woman in our neighborhood I, who I didn't know. And I said, okay, so this was Mrs. Morris. So I went over to Mrs. Morris's house. Her husband was dying of cancer. And so she was pulled in all different directions and needed some help. And she had some stepchildren, but there wasn't a great relationship, um, which I never really understood. She was a very nice, kind person and raised those three girls. So, but um, so anyway, I said, yeah, I'll help her. And not long after I started helping her, her husband passed away. Well, Mrs. Morris was, as you could imagine, she was devastated. And I would come over, and sometimes she'd just want to cry to me. And, um, and I would listen to her and, you know, be empathetic and such. And I loved cleaning for her. She was so nice, and she paid me so well. I was paid $5 an hour. <laughs> this was in the 80s when, when, um, when minimum wage was like three seventy five. dollars That's what I made at the chocolate store. <laughs> so $5 an hour was under the table. you know. And I just loved it, and she was so kind. She was like, oh, no, take a break now. You've got to take a break. Oh, but I need to finish, like, vac. No, 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 take a break. It's okay. Okay. So all right, all right. So then one day... Um, she wants me to do an errand for her. So she says, I want you to take my car, okay, and go down to the, um, the local, you know, the neighborhood grocery store and just pick up a couple of things. So she gave me the keys to her car and the list. And that car, <laughs> it was about the size of a boat. <laughs> And I had to, you know, back it up and out of her, her um, house, the garage, and somehow turn it around. It was, it was, I don't know what it was, some kind of Buick, I think. So anyway, and the, the brakes were extremely tight, so that if you just tapped them, it was like, like this. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going up the, up the hill, and I'm, I'm you know, Bateman Hill, and go over the hill. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm in this lady's car. And um, so I get to the, the store, and I go in, I got my list, I, I gather everything, I get up there, and she had given me a $20 bill. And imagine that <laughs> in today's day. But um, so anyway, $20 bill, so I'm, where is it? I, I'm looking everywhere. I'm like, she gave me this money. So I thought, oh, I must have dropped it in the car. So I go back out to the car, and I'm searching around the car. And there's this group of young boys over here watching. And I had, you know, I wonder if my, I dropped it and they got it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking. I, I cannot find it. I have to go back in the store and tell the guy that, look, I'm going to have to put everything back. And, and I, was, I was really upset because I thought, she trusted me. She gave me her car, and she gave me this $20 bill, and, the, and she's such a sweet lady. What am I going to do? And I'm like, oh, man, I have to go back and tell her this. So I go back, and um, going up the stairs, I'm thinking, um, gosh. So I get up there, and I um, tell her what happened, and I was in tears by that point. And I said, you know what? Um, I would have earned twenty dollars today, so I lost that. So just don't pay me today. I'll just work, but don't pay me. Um, 
that then it will then it will be okay. And she and I was in tears, and she's like, you know, she was really tiny. She's very tiny, so she's like this, right? She's like, <laughs> she's got this. She's like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's all right. And she was just so kind and so loving. And and then I I thought, okay, it's gonna be all right. It's really gonna be okay, you know that. Um, this won't cause a rupture, you know, despite the fact that I, you know, this had happened, it wasn't gonna cause a rupture. And, and she was just an incredible woman. She had been a nurse during World War II in Hawaii. And she used to like to dance, because down in her basement, there was like clothes all over the floor. But there was, there was this bit of lace that I'd see sticking out. And it was, um, they were the uh, like petticoats that she used to wear when she'd dance. And, um, you know, I, I have this thing for old, old clothes and costumes and such. And, and she had said, oh, do you want those? To, the, to this day, I still have those. <laughs> so anyway, I, I think of Mrs. Morris as being a very, very kind person. And she actually ended up moving um, to Arizona to be with her brother. Her, her stepchildren wanted the house. Her, their dad had left it to them. So... But she was supposed to be able to live there, but I guess it just got sold anyway. But I, I wish that, you know, I don't know, maybe she's listening to me now. She was quite elderly when I knew her. You know, but really, she it really stands out in my mind as someone who was just so kind. She had so much she was carrying, and she was so kind. So that's it. <laughs>